hello, hello. Welcome again back to GLC on this episode of The Light of the Southwest. Holly and I are so excited to have a very special guest with us today. We have Mr. Joseph Mendez, who is joining us all the way from, well, I think coming from El Paso today, but yeah, yeah. from Texas, right, Joseph? Exactly, exactly. But called to the nations. Amen. All right. Yes, because that's what he's about. You know, the Bible says that he so loved the world. That means every nationality, every ethnic group. That he sent his only son, Yeshua, Amen. Hamashiach, which Amen. means the Messiah, that whoever believes in him will shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But not just that, not uh, any kind of life, a God kind of life. Yeah, so Amen. And people that are listening today, we invite you, if you've not received Yeshua or Jesus, as most people know him by, into your life, well, th we're going to give you an opportunity to know him in a very personal way. And, you know, this is what this station is about, to reach out to all peoples, all nations, to share the good news. And so it's good news for you to have a salvation, an everlasting salvation with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. If you're just surfing through the mm -hmm. television right now, we just really encourage you to stop and, and listen to this episode. Father, I just pray right now that your spirit would be upon Joseph and be with us, me and Holly, as we begin to learn about what Joseph's ministry is doing here throughout Texas and throughout the world, and may your spirit just be poured out on us, and may it just just emanate through the television and all the different media uh, channels that are out there. We ask this in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, by his merits. Amen. 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 Yeah, I, I love <coughs> when, when you... You know, when you invite God into the situation, into the picture, great things happen because with him, nothing shall be impossible. And, uh, you know, as I've lived my life, and it's, you know, as I'm, you know, this year I'm celebrating 40 years of knowing the Lord. Amen. So that's a powerful thing. 40 is a, is a, is a great number. Yeah, it's like it a is. generational number. Yeah. So, you know, I always expect greater things, you know, even from year to year. But, you know, 40 is like a milestone, you know. Yes, it is. Like, you know, it, anyway. But uh, and I'm just celebrating that. But I've done, he's had me do so many different things, but he's always been so good. And it's like, it's worth it. It's worth it. You know, you might have some hard times, but God is worth it. To know him, to know what life is about. Because, you know, people are just walking around, stumbling, running into this, something into that. But Jesus said, I am the way. The only way, the truth and the life. And nobody can go up to the Father but by Him. So many people say, oh, there's many ways to God. No, it's not true. It's not true. There's only one way. And Jesus said, I am the way. So uh, just, just, you know, if you're listening down there, you're kind of thinking about what, you know, what, who should I follow? Well, the answer just came to you. I am the way, Jesus said. So that's the way you need to go. So anyway, I just want to throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you for yeah, sharing thank that. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, talking about how... Um, how the Lord can just use anybody with a willing heart. Right. I, I just, I really want to know, like, tell us a little bit about okay, how, well he, how he grabbed you, yeah. how he oh, put the cool. violin in your heart okay. at a young age, and then what he's mm -hmm. been doing with your ministry. Well, that's a very interesting story because, you know, I'm amazed by it. You know, at a, as a child at 12 years old, I ended up in a violin class or orchestra class, string class, and I, I just, I really didn't know too much about it, but Man, as soon as I started playing it, it was like, this is something I want to do. I, ju I just love the sound of it, everything about it, and uh, all the great musicians that have played before me, and they just, they just, it was, it just captivated me. So I continued in my studies uh, throughout uh, middle school and high school, and then I went to college all over the place. I went to study a lot of places, and then uh, eventually I ended up in a conservatory in the Boston area, uh, Cambridge area, right next to Harvard. And, uh, but it was there that the God, I, back then, the violin used to be my God. Because I, it was, I figured, if I could play the violin the best ever, I mean, the best I could, that was going to be, like, make me the happiest person in the world. Because everybody, oh, wow. everybody's always chasing something. Mm -hmm. Like, if I can just do this, or I can do that, mm -hmm. I'm just going to be the, the happiest person. So what right. happens that many people attain those goals, but the happiness is not there. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's no fulfillment without God in anything. Amen. So uh, so that's what happened to me. I was there in Boston area. 
uh, you know, among the greatest performers, the Boston Symphony, all these conservatories, uh, all these great musicians were in the area. And many times I'd go backstage to go talk to them. Like, I, I want to meet this person. I want to see what they're about. And I went back, I would go backstage and I would say they would, they'd finish this great performance and you'd see that they were not that happy. They were kind of sad. They were like unfulfilled. Like, and I was like, what is wrong with you? You just played the greatest performance ever and you're here not like, you'd look unfulfilled. And I'd be over there backstage smoking a cigarette, just like, you know, just uh, totally not happy. And that that's kind of really rocked my world. And I said, wow, what am I doing pursuing this? That I'm th thinking I'm going to just become the best musician. And then at the end of it, I'm not going to be happy because if these guys are re have gotten it, they're doing it, and they're at the top of their, their game, and nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what, what the, what, you know, the, it just shook my world, and I was just like, started questioning everything. Because uh, back then, I didn't know the Lord, and, you know, that's what I should have done, knowing the Lord at first. But anyway, he had his way of, of reaching me. So he has every way, way of reaching you, too, out there. So this might be your day. So, <laughs> so Amen. anyway, uh, so what happened, I was just like, you know, puzzled, troubled. But uh, thankfully, back then, you know, this we're doing, we're on a TV station right now. You know, we're, 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 we're broadcasting this. Well, back then, they, they had the 700 Club. They still have the 700 Club. Because I was living in the Boston area, and back then, in that area, there was not too many evangelical churches. There was not a lot of evangelists on the street. There's some parts of uh, the world there are, but there it was. But it was through the medium of television, of broadcasting, 700 Club, Pat Robertson. He started. I just, I just started flipping through the channels, and I ended up on that channel. And he just caught my attention, and he just started talking about life. That the only fulfillment we can have is through Jesus, uh, through God. Because he has a plan for our lives. And that really, it just grabbed my, it made a lot of sense. And, uh, and it just from then on, I just started serving the Lord. And I put this the violin aside for a while because I wanted to really focus on the Word. Because the Word is our life. It, it's the Spirit and the life. Jesus said the Spirit, the words that I speak, John 6, 63, are Spirit and they are life. So we, we need to, you know, it's good to have that experience of being, as you receive them into your heart, to be born again. But you need to feed off his word says, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of my mouth. So, so anyway, that's kind of a, in a nutshell what happened to mm -hmm. me. And since then, uh, he uh, just has been directing uh, my paths through music, through the nations. I've been to over 30 nations uh, from Siberia to Argentina, Africa, China, India, uh, Brazil, Colombia, Central America. The, the Virgin Islands, I don't know, Iceland, uh, just a lot of places, Europe. So, it's but it's because I've said yes to him, because you know the, we do have to say yes, you know, and, and it's a good thing to say yes to him because he has a plan for your life, and uh, he's going to lead you in the steps that he wants you to walk in. So that's that's kind of a short nutshell of. Uh, yeah. overview of what what he's done with me but we can talk about more things but i'll let you talk yeah about <laughs> no i think that's awesome i don't know how many times he has asked me to do something and that usually that first step is pretty difficult mm -hmm. yeah. a tremendous amount of faith it looks impossible but when you say yes and you just decide to walk you mm -hmm. see those doors open and mm -hmm. and he just again mm -hmm. it, it's 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 the beginning of that path to a great miracle, right? There's a story, and I'm sure you have a bunch oh, yeah. where he's done that for you, but mm -hmm. um, how beautiful is it that he picked your passion for violin, and then he puts it with the Messiah's heart, Right. and now you're traveling around the world, you're playing the violin, connecting with people. Can you tell us a little bit more about your, your music ministry? Okay, the music ministry, okay, so... Uh, I mean, I, I was playing, okay, I stopped for a while, and then I started studying the Bible, kind of get direction, kind of get, I kept playing the violin uh, in, in church orchestras and different venues, and different organizations, but it wasn't like to the 90s, which is about over 30 years ago now, mm -hmm. but that he, uh, he started focusing my direction, because, you know, uh, the violin is a very Jewish, and so he started giving me a vision for the Jewish people. Because, you know, there's this thing called replacement theology. And uh, let me talk to you a little bit about that. Where th it's coming to the church that the church has replaced Israel, that Israel is no longer important, the Jewish people are no longer important. Well, that could be further from the truth. 
the whole Bible revolves against around Israel. Because, you know, if you, as you know, the Bible was written there, all the prophets, all the preachers in the Bible, well, they're all Jewish. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and he's the King of the Jews. Mm-hmm. And he remains a Jew throughout all eternity. If you book the, uh, read the book of Revelation, it's full of the, the, of the uh, 24 elders are all Jewish. The 12 tribes are there, and, uh, and Jesus is, is still King of the Jews. But back to what this uh, what, what I'm trying to say is he started opening my heart to Israel that God is dealing not only with the nations, mm-hmm. I mean the people that are not right. saved, he's dealing with the church and he's dealing with Israel because uh, the whole Bible is about Israel, about everything is, you know, because he's going to return back to Israel and that's why he wrote in Genesis 12, 3 I will bless those that bless Israel and he also wrote in Psalms 122, 6 pray for the peace of Jerusalem May they prosper, those that love you. But so I was related this to me and to my music. Well, okay. So I started, I've been playing the violin, and then he started turning my, my attention towards Israel, the important thing about Israel, because sometimes people just, they don't think anything about Israel. You know, you, the Holocaust, imagine that. Mm-hmm. Right. That mm-hmm. nobody cared about Israel. They were being destroyed. And, and well, see, the world has this, in, in general, has this, uh, so take it or leave it stance with Israel. But, God wants us to awake to what he has for Israel. He has a beautiful plan. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, after in 1948, after 2,000 years of no Israel, he reinstituted, he reinstated that land. Mm-hmm. Uh, that from 1948, well, well, since 1948. So this, is, this year we're celebrating 75 years of the modern wow. Jerusalem, or the modern Israel. Mm-hmm. But 56 years of modern Jerusalem. But why did that happen? Because... He needs a place to come back before Israel was non-existent. So, you know, he said, I'm going to come back to Jerusalem. Because you see, as you see me leaving to the heavens, I'm going to return back mm-hmm. to Jerusalem. So he had to reestablish the nation of Israel. He had to reconnect. Because uh, uh, the Jerusalem in 67, there was a six-day war. The Jerusalem was divided, but he reconnected it. He reunited it. So that's further proof that he's coming back to Israel for his people. Now, there's another uh, verse that's called uh, Isaiah 40, verse 1, where it says, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. So music is a beautiful way to comfort the people. So he put me in connection with a lot of people that are doing messianic artists that are already doing uh, music for Israel. So he just put me in that same uh, stream. And so I just started opening, uh, you know, learning new music, he connected me with some of the greatest artists that are out there. Mm-hmm. And so that just and it showed me that his will for the violin for my life was to minister to not only to the Jew, but also to the nations. Not only, okay, for the Jews, it's to, to bring comfort to their lives. Because the Bible says that they have suffered twice mm-hmm. as much for their sins. That's in Isaiah 40. Mm-hmm. That they have suffered twice, so they need a lot of comforting. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and also, they don't know the Messiah the way we know him now. But they will. Eventually, the Bible says, all Israel shall be saved. He has not forgotten the Israelites or the Jews. So anyway, so through that, and another component of, the, of me playing the violin is to have people, maybe they've never been to Israel, to experience the music of Israel in a really uh, yeah. beautiful way. Mm-hmm. Like I was in a church earlier today, <coughs> and the, past, the, the pastor was saying, man, you transported us not only to Israel, but like into the heavenlies, like into the heavenly Israel, you Amen. know, future. So like I was, I was, I was, that was a beautiful statement she made. Wow. But, you know, that God has given me that gift to, you know, to connect people to Israel. It's, a, it's, it's like I said earlier, he's going to bless those that bless Israel. He wants to, his God is a, a God of blessing. He wants to bless as many people as he can. So just through blessing Israel, you're going to receive a blessing. Mm-hmm. I feel that there's many nations out there. That they're 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 in famine, they're in, in pestilence. Mm. Why? Because probably because they haven't blessed Israel, mm. but they don't know about that. Sometimes people they don't talk about that. But I'm here. That's why I go to the nation to talk about that. Not only through uh, verbally saying that, but through the music. You see, the music has a language of its own. You know, sometimes you know our mind gets in the way, but when you play a, an instrument, it bypasses over there, mm-hmm. and there's a message. Mm-hmm. That happens, like I said earlier, this this pastor where she mm-hmm. was saying, "Man, because she was not," you said you transported us, you know. Yeah. 
through that music, and all I was doing was saying, I didn't say a word. It was just the, the anointing, the music, just going straight to the heart mm -hmm. and just, just penetrating and just giving them a blessing and also giving them an appreciation for God, what God wants to do. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great thing. Yeah. So I know I'll let you ask the question. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's I beautiful. love it. Yeah. Music and instruments speak to the heart, like you said right. uh, earlier. It kind of by bypasses the mind, goes straight to the heart. Right. And um, I, 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 me and Holly are both musicians. We write, we write music and, and play together, nice. and, and we worship the Lord. And um, there are certain instruments that just really speak to you and speak to your heart. And so the violin, uh, or uh, is, is the instrument that that really encapsulates Israel. You know, it's like. Mm -hmm. What's the hakikva without the violin, right? It's right, like right. it's missing something, and yeah. you got to have that uh, the, that part. Um. Right. I mean, you said it's a very Jewish instrument, right. so elaborate a little bit on that. I would love okay. To hear well, that. you know, this is something I've <coughs> discovered. Like when I was playing for a long time ago, when I first started, uh, I it was just an instrument that I liked. But as I, you know, grown up and seen a lot of things, so first of all. The greatest violinists in the world that have ever lived and still live are Jewish. Mm. Like, yeah. you know, from back a long time ago, Heifetz and Isaac Stern and more recently Perlman and, and the, the list goes on and on that the greatest. But see, you know, it's, it's kind of funny the way God does things because, you know, he wants to, to, to soothe his people. He wants to comfort his people. And so uh, so he, put, he raises up Jewish people mm -hmm. because who are they going to minister to? To the Jewish people that they love, mm -hmm. that they came from, so I think that's kind of a funny thing that uh, that I'm just kind of thinking about right now, that he put, he gave the gift of the greatest violin player to the Jewish people, mm. and uh, so they could minister to themselves. Because oh. you know maybe somebody else will say, yeah, I don't care about the Jews, I'm not going to minister to them. But you know, there's other players that are not Jewish that are still good, but there's an aspect to the Jewish uh, heart of, of the violin because mm -hmm. when I go to Israel, you know, they see me carrying a case. And they don't want to just see it; they want to hear it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's 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 mm -hmm. it's a powerful thing, because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, of course, I love the violin, and uh, I have a root now a very deep appreciation for the Jewish music. It's, it's life itself, you know. It just it just w it just gives you life, you know. It just can you can imagine King David in his mm -hmm. day, yeah. You know that he just he just forgot who was around him or what they were thinking, or he just wanted to praise the Lord. And I'm sure there was uh, right. instrumentalists there that was just helping him get into that mm -hmm. spirit. And he just stayed there. Mm -hmm. You know, during his time, he used to have like 24-hour prayer centers. You know, he used to have choirs and instrumentalists. And he just wanted God to be praised and honored and worshipped. And so we should have that today, people out there, pastors or leaders throughout the wherever you are. You know, think about having 24-hour prayer, prayer centers. It's so important because that brings the presence of God on the scene. He says, I inhabit the praises of my people. Mm -hmm. So you want God to inhabit your area, to your community, your city. Mm -hmm. You just get out there and worship because he, he wants to inhabit those praises. And you know, the Bible says that he, it steals the enemy and quiets the avenger. Mm -hmm. You know, we have enemies, you know, but if through mm -hmm. music, through praise, he's going to come in and stop all that. You know, we have the story of uh, uh, Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles 20, 20. Where you know he 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 won the battle by putting the praises in front of mm -hmm. the army, mm -hmm. and so the the, and the enemy just just killed each other off. They got confused and they just killed each other off. Yeah. So there's a really key ingredient about praise and worship that just God gets involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, it's 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 so powerful that you <laughs> know we put an emphasis on that. But see, you know the Bible says to walk in the spirit. W and then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, if you want to just stay in the spirit, you know, it's worship him, praise him, and he's going to just download on you. And, you, you know, you just all you're going to want to do is praise him, worship him. You're not going to be thinking about all these bad things because, you know, the enemy is going to try to get us to go the other wrong way. Mm -hmm. But when we are in his presence, there's fullness of joy in his presence. That's what it says, at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. Amen. Wow. Amen. We can have heaven on earth. Let me say one more thing. I've just got to get started here. That, um, you know, in heaven, if the atmosphere of heaven, when you see the book of the, Re the book of Revelation, 
You know, there's so much awesome worship going on, and people are casting their crowns at the Lord. They're just loving Him, and just the atmosphere is so mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, for you know, there's no sin, there's no evil. They're just glorif the angels are glorifying Him. There's just a total beautiful atmosphere as as we read in the Book of Revelation. Then you know, Jesus prayed, "Thy will be done mm -hmm. on this mm -hmm. earth as it is in heaven." Mm -hmm. So Amen. part of His will on this earth is to have this this beautiful worship continual because mm -hmm. yeah. then it's, that's going to invite his presence on this earth and it's going you know it's going to make it that much more beautiful amen wow. yeah. so we just love that amen. yeah Hallelujah. <laughs> why don't you beautiful. speak why don't you speak to our audience uh, <laughs> you've brought you brought uh, with you this giant shofar i've i've seen a it's lot of shofars yeah. uh, and, and and this one is is a beautiful uh, example <laughs> of a yemenite shofar and this is also uh, an instrument, but it also is a very spiritual weapon, yes. right? And we're talking about breaking strongholds with music. This is one that yeah. will do it. Uh, and, and I believe if you read, read uh, the story of Jericho and the walls oh, yeah. coming down, uh, this is possibly the very, the very weapon used to knock those mm -hmm. walls down, yeah. right? Well, yeah. It was the sound of a shofar. They probably had different types of shofars, but this is a... Different different animals are considered uh, the kosher for for getting their horns and having their sound heard. Mm. This is a more well. Anyway, this is a real powerful instrument. I'm going to play it for a while for the audience out there. Get ready to receive. You're going to be blown away by God's power and presence. But you know, you were mentioning Jericho and Joshua six. You know, he told you know Moses he didn't make it into the promised land, uh, but he sent Joshua in. And he says, you know, take this city, take that city. And then he tells them, have not I commanded you, talking to Joshua, only be strong and of a good courage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only be strong and courageous. Have, God was like serious. Like he, he repeated several times yeah. in the first, the book of, of the first chapter of the book of Joshua. So Joshua, like he's just like, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm just going to take you at your word. Because, you know, him and Caleb, man, they were like, out of yeah. all those people, they're the ones that were allowed That's to come right. in. And so, uh, so then they get to Jericho. Now, you know, if you, if you read that account in the sixth chapter of Joshua, those walls around Jericho were massive. They they say they could uh, ride chariots on the top. Th they were wide, and they could do all kinds of things. So well, they were impenetrable except for God. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if you have a sit uh, impossible situation, God is greater. Mm -hmm. uh, he's greater. So anyway, so he says six days, so you walk around and. And be quiet, but then the seventh day you're gonna march seven times, sound the shofars, and shout. And what happened? Those walls that were supposedly were impenetrable, they just crumbled and fell. Yes. But it was the sound of the shofar that brought that to happen. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible says that God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You know, because sometimes He'll say, "Lay hands on that person," and like. My hands, uh, let's stop that. No, let's put oil on that one or pray this. And guess what? Miracles happen because oh, out of yeah. obedience. Say yes. You just, yeah, say yes. Uh, obedience. See, that's why I said that earlier scripture. You know, he uses the, the foolish things to confound yeah. the wise. Now, uh, if you, uh, you want to hear this? Yes. yes okay, or we're I'm going to blow it. But uh, I just want you in your life to receive what, what you might be missing. And if there's any walls that might have come up in your life, well, we're going to believe right now at the sound of the shofar because God is no respecter of persons. And that when this sound is heard, wherever you're at, you're going to receive a blessing of some type. Just ask him, God, I want the blessing that you have for me. Because, you know, he knows what we have need of. You know, he knows everything about us. He created us. So just stand in faith there because this is a sound that he instituted. This is not an idea of man. Man had never even thought about it. And so they probably, Joshua and his people thought, oh, God, okay, I'll just do it. Just by faith, I'll do it. I'll make you happy. <laughs> but the miracle happens when we do what he asks us to do. So this is, uh, I'm going to blow it. I just want you to receive it and be blessed by the hearing of the shofar. Thank <laughs> you. 
you got something out of that. That was uh, <laughs> that was pretty mighty blow there. But uh, it's I've seen so many things great hap happening everywhere as a result of that. And uh, you know, it's uh, I, I believe so much. So in 1998, the Lord said, "Get a prayer shawl and get a shofar." And uh, I've, I've been signing that shofar all around the world. But the people that always have the greatest impact when I play it are the Jews, the Israelites. Mm. When I play it over there in Jerusalem, they just come like a standstill. It's like God just like mm. really just penetrates their hearts. And, mm -hmm. and I don't know what's going on, but it's something good. Yeah. Because they're called, this is something from their from their heritage, yeah. from, that, from the Jewish world. That, But anyway, it's a blessing for everybody. I, just, I really believe. There was that was like I could feel, I could feel his power go, going through that, and uh, you just received so something from him. You know he uses me to blow it, but ultimately it's him blowing it through me, Amen. and it's like, like we said a bit about obeying him. He told me to sound it everywhere I go, and so today I was playing it here, and uh, and I. I just ble I believe that you were blessed by that. Amen. Oh, man, I was. <laughs> I, I felt it. That was great. So not only a, uh, a, a, a accomplished violinist, but a trumpeter as well. And that yeah. you blew that perfectly. I've blown some shofars, and uh, sometimes I, I've even done it uh, where I kind of get a squeak now and then. It's kind of embarrassing, especially when you're on stage. <laughs> but you you nailed it, and, and that was that was the father working through you. That was yeah. awesome. Thank you for that. that you're was welcome. You're welcome. It, it, and it's really it's my, it's a it's a privilege. It's an honor for me to to be able to blow it because it's you know it, it it's something very special. You know the Bible in Exodus 19, the first time the shofar is mentioned. If you start reading the Bible, first time it's mentioned is in Exodus 19, and who's blowing it? God Himself. So. You know, he wanted to introduce it. That's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. And then in Exodus 20, he mm -hmm. gives the Ten Commandments being on Mount Sinai, you know. Mm -hmm. The Ten Commandments are given, and there's thundering, and there's lightning, and the people are just like, oh, wow, God, you're going to destroy us today. There's, there's this, this great, this wonderful atmosphere. But as he's giving the Ten Commandments, the sound of the shofar keeps getting louder and louder. It's like he really wanted to get their attention. So, uh that it's, it's something that's real special that, that he introduced the shofar himself at a very special time. Mm -hmm. So we see that that at special events, or like you know when they were crowning kings, or the, the walls of Jericho coming coming down, or at the return of Jesus. That's you right. Know, these are like mm -hmm. pl places where the shofar is heard. So it's something very special, mm -hmm. you know. So it's it's a good thing to listen to to hearken unto his voice, and through the shofar and just be blessed. And, uh, and believing that you're going to be just set free from a lot of things. <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah, mm. hallelujah. Amen. I think there's, uh, they say that Jewish history is also Jewish prophecy. Yeah. Right? What, what happened in the past uh, is, a, is a foreshadow and a picture of what are things to come. Definitely. And so the, we, we see the power of the shofar in the giving of the Torah. We see it um, through the feasts. And we right. hear about it also. He's going to come back with the sound of a great trump, and right. and, and these a different shout. and these and these and these shout of. Uh, so we see it kind of coming in the future right. again with Mashiach right. when he when he comes mm -hmm. back. Um, if you're if you're watching and you're wanting to connect and you're hearing this and it's speaking to your heart, I'm telling you, you need to look at the feast. Uh, and understand uh, the 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 prophetic visions uh, or what the wow. the prophecy of the feast, mm -hmm. um, and when you understand that, I think you'll have better keys to really unlock the Book of Revelations mm -hmm. and and other things. So, uh, if this is speaking to you, uh, reach out to uh, Joseph's ministry uh, and and those around you. There's so many great resources uh, right. to to give you uh, understanding of what these things are all about. Right, right. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm very. I love this station, GOC, because uh, in the past they've done they brought the, the the Hebrew roots of our faith to to a place where you could learn about them and and, and know about them. Because like I was said earlier, there's been a thing called displacement theology, where they changed so many things and they took a lot of the Jewishness, the Hebrew thought that that the Bible was based on, mm -hmm. and they just kind of whitewashed it, and but. God, you know, he's very zealous for his word. He's very zealous for what he wanted to uh, put into the earth. And he wants you to have everything. He wants you to have it all. So this this station, uh, God's Learning Channel, has been very instrumental 
to to bring that to the people and and you know there was a time that that, <coughs> that the station almost went under but <laughs> but god he, he'll have his way you know it's yeah. like it's like you know it's like a little twig of israel that was like destroyed and then this little twig mm. comes up and right. it'll break big boulders if you let it just like it'll, it'll just oh, man. because you, you've seen that like a little twig or a little <laughs> weed it will just break a big old stone or a boulder and because his, his word is like that you know it's powerful and yeah. so really we want you to get the fullness of what he has for you because many things have been stolen from us as believers from him and so like you were talking about the thief th- those are like rehearsals of what's going to happen in the future and he wants you to be blessed you know, those are divine visitations that he, where he just has an open portal over us, and he just mm. comes down and visits with us, and spends time with us, and uh, mm. so so I'm glad you talked about that. And, and though, so through this mm. station and now there's uh, many congregations and groups that have started as a result of the teachings on this station mm. throughout the years, and so we're, we're blessed by the station. So you know, if in any way you can support this this station. Uh, I'm sure there's ways that the little mounts here mm-hmm. to to be a blessing, because God raised up this station for you, for His kingdom, to be blessed, to be more knowledgeable, to to expand it, because we need all this information. It's like I said earlier that you know, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. So sometimes some some chapters have been cut out or or not talked about that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, the Word of God is Yeshua Himself. He's the Word made flesh. And He wants He wants you to, to partake of every part of it. So, you know, we're happy for the station. We're happy for what, what you're hearing today. And if you have questions, you can call. Or I'm sure there's a phone number here somewhere that you get more information. And anything we have said today, mm-hmm. we're available to you to just to, to be a resource. And, and, yeah, so just be blessed. Yeah. So I uh, have always been interested in music uh, my dad uh, would play the guitar for us praise nice, and worship songs nice. as a child so uh-huh. I grew up uh, you know just praising the Lord and um, my skill set is not what I would consider amazing but it comes from a place of just wanting to worship the Father Amen. so the piano, the guitar, um, I picked up a violin for wow. a while and just learned the basics. But <laughs> I understand with violins that they're very precious and they typically have a story in and of themselves. And um, what I, some of the language I'm hearing from you is, um, you know, being an instrument and the word flowing and Uh, We talked about Yeshua being the way, and as I'm looking at these instruments, I know that they each have a story. Right. But they, it reminds me, and it resonates that, in and of themselves, that violin sits there, and it's empty, it's lifeless, it doesn't do anything, as well as the shofar. But when a master musician picks it up it transforms that instrument into a life-giving, inspiring word comes from those that touches Mm -hmm. our soul at a deep level. And without Yeshua, I am a beautiful, we are God's creation, and we are amazing, but we're empty. And it's Yeshua who gives us life and brings forth the music that each one of us are created to impart into this world, to bring glory to our Father. Amen. And um, so uh, do these instruments have a specific story that you could share with us? Well, uh, well, but I got to talk about the violin. Uh, there was a time I lived in Europe for a whole year. He sent me to Europe to study and to just to just be there to minister. Uh, you know, over here in America, we're blessed. Mm. You know, we have churches everywhere, practically in every corner. You know, not whether they're alive or not, that's another story. But mm. we have churches, we have actually, we have people pr- uh, preaching on the radio, we got TV, we got a lot of Bibles everywhere. We got the, the most, uh, like most published book anywhere. So we are very blessed. We're supposedly one nation under God. And God we trust and all that. So we're, we're, we're like, if we really want something from God, 
you're going to get it. It's mm. easy. It's easy access to God. You know, it's just just a little bit of effort. But like places like in Europe, you know, you have to understand back then, you know, there was a lot of persecution. You know, that's why the people of America was founded, because all the people they wanted to practice their religion or, or their faith and freedom. So they they're being persecuted in Europe. So a lot of them, the founders of this country were godly people. If you, if you study American history, and so they came over here and they, they started, you know, trying to build a nation, one nation under God and. You know, we have George Washington did a statue to him on his knees, mm. you know, praying for this country. And so God established this country as, as a godly nation. But you have to understand also that the people that came over here were being persecuted over there. So Europe was kind of left, not entirely, but they were left kind of in a, you know, some were not too much of God. <laughs> all the, 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 the people that really had the God came over to England. Right. And That's so right. they were kind of left, you know, mm. it was not the best, but they had something. So God sent me to Europe, you know, to kind of, to hmm. kind of, kind of, you know, like I, you know, share with them to kind of give them the what He wants for them. So, and then that uh, was, uh, I had a violin. This is another story. Well, anyway, I had a violin. It was it was from Rome, and which was it was a good instrument, Italian violin. Uh, but it, something happened and it got destroyed. I don't want to hmm. go through all the details, but it was like. Destroyed. Oh Completely no. unplayable. Oh. There are those splinters everywhere. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Toothpicks. <laughs> yeah, right. Aww. But it's good. It's a. It's it's um. It's made out of wood, and it's it's under a lot of tension because the strings and all the the way it's made up. But it's it's something that he designed. It's really beautiful because it produces this uh, wonderful sound. So I was uh, I was in p one part of Europe, and then I went to another part of Europe. I was in in Austria. That's where a lot of the holo mm. pe Holocaust happened. That's where Hitler came out of Austria. Well, he was a German, but then he, he, he rose to power and all that craziness uh, in Austria and Vienna. So uh, I was there, and I, well, that was one reason I went to that, just kind of like to minister to the Jews there, to kind of change the climate that mm. had been, you know, that because they were pretty much Austria, Germany, were the people that really brought the Holocaust on. And th th I'm not saying anything bad about it, but that's history. That's what mm. it happened, the way it happened. So anyway, when I was in Austria, there was a family that had this violin there, and, and they gave it to me. Like, wow. So it was like, uh, I got it there, and it has no label, so I don't know who, you know, who made it, but it's a good instrument, and I've really loved it. It was much Aww. better than my other violin. So I've been using it, all going through all the world, playing here and there. I've, I've ministered at the White House, or at the, yeah, in the Washington, D.C., with it. I've recorded three... Th you know, I have more CDs, but uh, three official CDs, and I'm working like three more projects that are in the works, uh, all on this violin. And so it's it's been a big blessing, and uh, it's touched so many hearts. Uh, one time I was at the uh, on the Jordan, let's see, yeah, the Jordan River, where they have the baptismal site close to the to the Galilee, and uh, I was just playing there because the people were getting baptized, and there was this one guy. I forgot what nationality he was. He was either Russian or he was uh, Israeli. But he was through an interpreter. He says, when you were playing, he says, my heart got so <laughs> big. You know, it was, like, it, was like, it was like the Lord just filled him to overflowing. Wow. So, you know, it's touched so many people. You know, I've been on GOC. And, and just a lot of places he's placed me to, to just minister on this violin. That's <laughs> so wow. beautiful. And so it's, it's really a special violin. Uh, so that's a little bit of a story, but uh, you know, uh, it's just that's beautiful. Thank you. It made me think of the verse for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. For is it for good works? Unto good works. Unto yeah, good works. For, for good works. Yeah, this is. Uh, I'm saying he all is things prepared things. in advance for yeah, us. Yeah. So this violin was created for me to yes. uh, to good works. You know, before the foundations of the earth, he yes. had this design. So he connected me with it, and uh, you know, it's it's been with me a long time. So yeah. And I have other violins, just like backup violins, because, you know, these violins are very uh, they're delicate. Sometimes they, they develop cracks, or this will happen, and so you have to take it to the shop and get it fixed. Because mm. in the meantime, I need a violin. So you know, I have my, my kind of spare violins, but not this one. This one. So if someone were to look you up online, they would find you under Jeru Joseph. The, well, okay, my ministry officially is the Jerusalem Violin. Let me just okay. talk about that a bit. Great. Uh, Long time ago, when I first started going to Israel, I met this guy. He was a producer for music. 
So I always wanted to record in the United States, and it would never happen. This went wrong, or that went wrong. Oh, Lord, what's going to happen here? So, but uh, there was this one guy, his name was Doves, who, a legend memory, he's passed on. But he was a producer, and he was, he was born in Israel. He fought in the, the, in the war in 1948 when, when Israel became a nation. He was attacked, and he was part of the Palmach, which was an elite group. Anyway, he had a, a long story. He was a great guy. And anyway, so he came out of that, and then, you know, people were just kind of immigrating to Israel. People were just, there was kibbutzes, and there was all just people just kind of from coming from all over the world. And so they, what they did, they had, they started forming choirs. Because, you know, music unites people. Mm. So they started singing about land, about returning back to the land and all that. So Dove, he was a member of one of these choirs, the Gebatron, which was like the most famous at that then. So anyway, but then he realized, I'm a singer, but I'm more of a businessman. So he started, like, uh, producing people, you know, like, you know, making recordings, promoting. And uh, so that, w- that, for that was kind of his gift. So then, so Dove started... 1948 back then and I met him in like the year 2000 because he was here in the states and I uh, was helping him he was at a conference which was all Spanish speaking mm. of course he speaks Hebrew and he spoke some English but he needed somebody to interpret for him to this uh, pr- uh, conference so anyway as a when he, he brought all his music that he had produced and it all sold and he goes I owe you a big favor I said of course you do <laughs> <laughs> so he says so I, I said, yeah, well, you can record me in Israel in your studio. And he's recorded, like, a lot of top-name people. And he's, like, in, in the music industry in a big way. Mm-hmm. So he, that's, God used this situation for me to go to Israel and record mm. and to meet a lot of great musicians. Mm. And uh, so that's, that, that's a really cool story that it was how, how God used that situation for me to, to get recorded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, and there's, there's other things like that that, that he's really connected me to the land, to the music, to the people. Because even when I minister, I minister the music of Israel, because that's what they know. Like, you know, somebody <coughs> can come over here and play other music, you don't know it. You might appreciate it, but when something that you've grown up with, that you, you know, that's part of you, when you, you play that for them, it's, it has a whole other special meaning. So that, that's, that's pretty interesting, the way that happened. How many, uh, well, no, let me put it this way. Are you planning on going to Israel this year? Have you been already? And how often do you okay. go? Okay, uh, let me finish. I forgot. Oh, the yes, Because you had ahead. asked me a question. I didn't answer your That's question. That's fine. So, because yeah. I'm known as a Jerusalem Vinyard. Hold that question. Oh, yeah, you're fine. So, Dove, back then, when I started met him, he says, well, you need a, f- he, he's a promoter. He's a business guy. He wants to, he wants to, like, make sure you succeed. He says, you know, you should have a name for yourself. And, mm-hmm. and I said, well, what, what do you think, Dove? And he goes, Jerusalem Vinyard would be a good name. And so, so perfect. <laughs> so he gave me that, and I just felt as if it was from God, because mm. I I love Jerusalem. I go to that's my favorite place to go, and and I just represent I represent Jerusalem through music on the violin. So not only to Jerusalem, but when I go to the other nations, I bring Jerusalem to them. Okay. Mm. Now tell me again. Ask me your story. Your question again. Yes. So are Are you I'm planning on going to Israel okay. this year? Well, you know, uh, for during the pandemic. Israel was shut down totally unless you were mm-hmm. vaccinated. Even then, they were very restricted. Mm-hmm. You right. wouldn't even have a good time because there were so many uh, restrictions. So uh, finally, last uh, Sukkot, or Feast of Tabernacles, after three years, imagine me that I was used to going to twice a year, spending two months out of the year in Israel, and uh, not being able to go. I was like, what am I going to do with myself? Mm-hmm. Anyway, I still God helped me, and I was able to still do things. But I was able to go to Israel during Sukkot this past, and I just had a marvelous time. I was just going everywhere, from Jerusalem to Haifa, just uh, diff- many different venues. And so I went then t- after three years back, and but now everything's open. Uh, me and my wife are going to go for 35 days okay. in May mm-hmm. and to June, and it just I know it's going to be a great time because it's going to be the May 14th Independence Day is going to be celebrated. Uh, Jerusalem Day is going to be celebrated. Shavuot, the fist Feast of Weeks, mm-hmm. or 10 o'clock, is going to be celebrated mm-hmm. during that time, and other celebrations. So I'm really looking forward to that. Wow. It's 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 a ministry time, but you know it's not just people think it's ministry. Okay, it, it's it's a celebration time. It's to bring heaven on earth to the people. That's the that's the way I view it. You know, to be in the joy and to be in love and to be in His shalom, bringing His bringing His peace to them and and just comforting them. That's kind of what I do, and then just loving on them because they, they need that 
they need that so much, and you know we're supposed to do that for them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I'll be there, and uh, if you follow me on mm-hmm. Facebook, you go see me there as I was just ministering all over the place mm-hmm. through music. Yeah. yeah, amen. Well, we need to follow you. That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, that'd yeah. be great. If if there's anybody interested, say like in the United States, Texas, or that that would love to have you at an event or a conference or a wedding or what? Do you yeah. do you do you? you they I'm can available. get a hold of you through through your website. Through my website, and uh, they, they, if you could put, I don't know, if they're gonna put my phone number on the the my mm-hmm. website, JerusalemViolinist.net. There's ways to contact me through that website, and uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm always. I mean, I'd like to do weddings. Weddings are fun, and other events. That, you know, they can contact me there, uh, and uh, you know, if you want to support Jerusalem yes. Violinist throughout the world. I am a 501c3, which uh, means I have a, a through the IRS, I'm considered a, a nonprofit organization, uh, as uh, other ministries are, mm. and so they can make any contributions. They can do it through the website. They can connect to me with that. But you know, it's it's only if you want to. I'm not going to twist anybody's arm, <laughs> but you know, you'll be blessed because you'll be Amen. blessing Amen. Israel. Amen. So Amen. Well, I d- yes, I just yeah. So uh, yeah, so the Lord has opened so many uh, beautiful doors that He opens for me all the time. And I just love to walk in them because, uh, uh, you know, this past, uh, I mean, well right now we're, well, I don't want to, we, we, we I've been, we've been celebrating Pesach, and so uh, these past few weeks, well, this past week and a little bit more, but I've just going going nonstop. Like, I was like, I was in El Paso yesterday. Uh, uh, I was in Monaghan's this morning. And I was in Fort Worth area. I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma City, wow. San Antonio. So. I just been going nonstop, but it, it's 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 a it's a it's a privilege to be that busy. You know, I'd rather be busy than not busy. Yeah. And then, but he gives me rest every so often. <laughs> <laughs> but awesome. mm-hmm. but I, I love to serve him. I love to bring joy. I love to talk about his presence, how mm-hmm. precious he is, what he's done for us. He's done so much for all of us. You know, we can't even imagine. You know, he for first of all, he created you. Ah, Amen. You know, he's you know we have our parents. But you, he's the creator. He gives you life. He gives you things. He gives you everything. He's giving you a purpose and a mission for your life. Now, sometimes I think, oh, sh- I don't know anything about myself. I don't. I'm, I'm not. I'm a loser. I'm this or that. Well, get to know your God, and He'll reveal to you what you were created to do. You know, we're created unto good works. We're created unto good. I like that word. Mm-hmm. That, that, that you know, He can help accomplish them to us. You know, everybody has a purpose on this earth. And sometimes we kind of miss it because it's you know we're told that they're, they're good or they're mm-hmm. you know, they never amount to anything, mm-hmm. but uh, that's not true. God has a special purpose for everybody. That's why He put you on this earth for a time such as this, just like the Queen Esther. You know, He could have put you in, in the another uh, t- time period, but He chose to put you at this time because He had a special mission. Sometimes people they don't realize it, but you know, if you seek Him, He's going to reveal it to you, and it's going to be something powerful. It's going to make you happy. He has something special. For for you, like for me, when I was, you know, a kid, I didn't know I was going to play the violin. It didn't make sense. But as as time progressed, you know, I could see the great thing he had for me. And then it's just following those footsteps. And he's going to put people in your path to help you mm. get there. And so uh, so this is like one place here <laughs> that's helped me get there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, uh, right. but, you know, but we help each other. We're, we're, mm-hmm. we're a body of believers. We help each other. And uh, so I, I'm really, I just encourage to um, – to let you know there over there on wherever you are in this world that uh, God is has a plan for you he loves you he he created you with a purpose and he wants to reveal himself to you in a very special way and uh, it's like the greatest thing or he's the greatest person you'll ever know and he'll just make your life so full and he'll just make you appreciate mm-hmm. everybody around you and just give you a different perspective on life cuz sometimes people walk around like oh Everything's, you know, like Murphy's law. If anything's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong. Mm. <laughs> no, but there's, there's God's law, which is above every mm-hmm. other law. So, you know, he, he, come, he came in John 10.10. 10. He says, the thief comes only but to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the enemy. Kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that you have my, might have life and life more abundantly, or life to the full. So he wants that for you. So, you know, this... You, know, you don't want to be stolen from or killed or destroyed. We want to have a fullness of life in him, and that's available. It's so like it's so crazy because I, you know, I was sharing with you that when I was living in Boston, I was going from here to there and this, 
can't go, uh, most people go around aimlessly. They, they try to do the best they can, but, you know, without him, you can't have really no direction. And you, a lot of times you run into this dead end or that dead end. But if he gives you, like, a vision, a purpose, a direction, and we, that's what he, he sent Jesus into the world for, to give you your life a sense of direction, to give you a purpose, to give you, to fulfill your life, and just to give you his love and his joy and his peace. And that's, that's the greatest thing we could ever have. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Will you be an instrument of the Lord? Will you will you yeah. say yes? Will yes. you take that first step? Yes. You know, the Shema, he talks about uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Mm. And he said, but also to love your neighbor as yourself. And I remember a few years ago, I had this revelation that I didn't love myself. Oh, wow. That there was a voice in my head, and it was speaking to me, and it said, you're a failure, You're not. you're not good enough. Uh, you're not doing enough, um, but how can I love my neighbor if I can't even love myself? And I, I just think there's probably a lot of us in yeah. that are out there that that have that same voice that's trying to right. take, judge, tell you that you're not good enough, and um, but believe the other voice, the voice right. of our Messiah, yeah. the voice of truth, that you are loved. Amen. That you are unique. That's right. That he does have a mission for you, that you're not alone. Exactly. Um, and, um, man. That uh, you have a purpose. That you have Amen. a purpose. Because you're Amen. important. He, he, he planned it out. He's talking about the God of all creation. He, he planned it out. Okay, mm. I'm going to put Eric and Holly <laughs> on this earth at this time because I, I have a mission for them. And he has a mission for you, and he placed you. If you're hearing me, he placed you on this earth at this time. And, and you know, you might have missed a few years here and there, but, hey, it's all is not lost. All is not lost. You know, just get him in his life. He'll catch you up. He'll, he'll, you, know, you know, your latter end shall be greater than the former. Mm-hmm. I think that's the scripture, your, your mm-hmm. latter end. The la- latter part of, of the rest of your life will be greater than anything you might have missed out on in the beginning. But the thing is, you have to make a connection. You have to just connect with him. in Because he's ready. He says, that, he says in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. So Amen. he's knocking at that door. And, and sometimes we might not hear it because we have this going on and we have that going on. And there's like, and you might even think, like, who could care about me? Especially God, I've done so many wrong things. So uh, hello, we all have. Nobody's like, if <laughs> anybody you meet, even though they might be the most perfect Christian or believer that you've ever met, they have some stuff that they've done, and God was able to forgive them. So that's why he had to send Jesus. Like, if, if man can make it on his own, well, we wouldn't have need, needed Jesus to pay right. that perfect sacrifice. Uh, so, you know, no one is without sin. And he knows it. You know, he's our creator. He, you know, he doesn't sleep. He doesn't, uh, mm-hmm. he, he's always watching everything. You know, you might think you're, you're hiding something from him. Guess what? You're not. He sees everything at all times. So he knows about you, and he's, He's, you know, he's full of compassion. He wants to reach out to you. He loves you with an everlasting love. So don't miss out on that. This is something that it's the greatest gift that was ever given was the life of Jesus that he paid on the uh, cross of Calvary when he paid for the sins that we could never pay for. And, you know, he, he presented his blood before the Father, the perfect blood that just took away all of our sins. And, you know, forever and ever that, that blood that he that paid the price for us. So we ought to do is accept it and just receive the salvation that he has for us. It is something beautiful. I, I just want to just let you know, I don't want to let you just walk, okay, just say, I heard that before. No, take it in. It's for you. It's for you. You don't want somebody to steal your inheritance. That belongs to you. God, imagine an inheritance from God. Isn't that powerful? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, we might have rich uncles and aunts or whatever. Mm. That leaving inheritance, but we got an inheritance from mm. above, and this is an inheritance that's going to last you throughout all eternity. So, wow, that's a big one. That's a big one. So, uh, go ahead. Tell us if you have anything else on your heart. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're feeling inspired right now, uh, I just, I just, I don't. Let's just. Can you lead us in prayer? Yes, I'd love to. You know, you know, when I got saved, when I got, I received the Lord, I was like, man. This is the greatest news anywhere. So I just like just started telling everybody. Like I was like they probably thought I was crazy, and I was. But I was crazy in love with God, and you know, because 
here I was searching through the violin or something, and I was really like giving it all I had. And, and yeah. I was thinking the end result's not going to get me anywhere. Yeah. So when I said, man, you guys need to get this right. You need to know that there's a creator, and he sent his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, which yeah. means salvation. Yeshua means salvation. He sent salvation into the earth to pay the price for your sins, mm -hmm. and he just wants you to have that. And so just right now, wherever you're at, it doesn't matter what you're doing, just stop for a second, and it, it just, just say, Father, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you love me so much that you sent your only begotten son, your only son, Jesus, into this world to die on the cross, to pay for my sins, so that, because I could never have done that, but you did it on my behalf, and today, all I have to do is receive you into my heart, into my life. So thank you, Lord. I, I take that. I receive that salvation. I receive that finished work at Calvary that Yeshua, Jesus, came to give us. I just receive it into my life. I thank you for that free gift of life and life more abundantly, that free gift of life, eternal life, not just this temporary life that we have on this earth, but we're talking about a life that will never be ending. It will be an eternal life with you. And all we have to say is yes. All we have to say is I receive that salvation. I receive the knowledge that I am a sinner and that myself, I cannot, I cannot save myself. I, have that, I don't have that capacity. But through your mercy and your goodness and your love, I can receive that eternal life because you love me so much. And so at this day, at this moment, I receive that salvation, that beautiful love that you have for me. And I thank you so much, and I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> it's, it's something beautiful that, you know, that sometimes people don't realize how, how, how glorious a life we can have with yeah. him. It's, it's just yeah. so powerful. Well, it's, and <laughs> it's just been such an honor to have you with us today and to hear the words of the Lord spoken through you. It's touched my heart. And amen. I know that it will have touched so many people's hearts out there. So thank you so welcome, much, welcome. Mr. Mendez, for joining us. Well, it's thank my you. pleasure, and uh, you know, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I, I just, I'm just, I just love you guys that, that you know you're making yourselves available for His work and His kingdom. And you too, He's waiting for you. He's knocking Amen. on that door. Amen. Open Amen. that door. And let Him in. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you all for joining us on this episode of the Light of the Southwest. Uh, please like and share uh, the video, um, and, and we look forward to having you uh, with us again on the next show. Be blessed, everyone. <laughs> Shalom. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That was awesome. Thank you.